Good morning. Wonderful to have you here. Wonderful to have you here who are joining us online. Happy Easter. He is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. Today we celebrate not death, but life because of what our Savior has done for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord's right hand is majestic in power. The Lord's right hand has shattered the enemy. In the greatness of his majesty, he threw down those who opposed him. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, grave, is your sting? Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and opened the gate to eternal life. Grant that we who have been raised with him through baptism may walk in newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise now and forever. Amen. Jonah was as good as dead. Three days in the belly of a great fish. It was like a grave. And yet even there he had confidence that salvation belongs to the Lord, that God could save him even from death. And this was just a sign of what God would do on Easter, bring Jesus back from the dead and give us that confidence too. Salvation comes from the Lord. A reading from Jonah chapter 2. Jonah said the following, In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me, From the belly of the grave I cried out, and you heard my voice. You threw me into the depths, into the heart of the seas. The currents swept around me. All your breakers and your waves swept over me. I said, I have been driven away from your sight. Nevertheless, I will once again look toward your holy temple. Waters engulfed me so that it was near death. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth locked me behind its bars forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered the Lord. My prayer came to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols forsake the mercy that is theirs. But I, with a shout of thanksgiving, will indeed sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will certainly pay in full. Salvation belongs to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Your life might not seem like it used to be right now. All of the joy, all of the fun, all of the routine might seem gone. But don't look around you to find your life. Don't look at yourself. Look at Christ. For your life is hidden with Christ. But you can see it when you look to him to the one to whom you were connected through your baptism, who died and rose for you, so that you will rise too. A reading from Colossians chapter 3. Therefore, because you were raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. 
For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 28, beginning at verse 1. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, he rolled away the stone and was sitting on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards were so terrified of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Go, quickly, and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead. And look, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. They hurried away from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. They approached, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go, tell my brothers that they should go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
pray. Heavenly Father, through your word, open our hearts to truly know and believe the victory of the resurrection. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll be telling this sermon from the perspective of the soldiers who were guarding the tomb that day. Talk about the worst Easter ever. First of all, we had to work all weekend. Second of all, our job was guarding a tomb making sure a dead guy stayed dead. What a boring job. Day and night, nothing was going to happen. The only people that thought something was going to happen were these crazy religious leaders who should have known better because they were the ones who had this man killed days before. Why would they worry about him as if he was some great prophet? They killed him. He was dead. Yep, they wanted us to watch the tomb to make sure a corpse didn't come rolling out. And if that's all we had to do on Easter, it would have been a pretty bad Easter, but it wouldn't have been the worst Easter ever. No, what made it the worst Easter ever is that the dead guy came out. We had one job. Keep a dead guy dead. And we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. This is how we found out. Suddenly, suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, he rolled away the stone. He he rolled it away like it was nothing, and then he was sitting on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. I mean, we tried to do our job, but you should have seen it. Though you couldn't really have seen it. Have you ever tried to stare at the sun or at a bolt of lightning? Have you ever tried to stand firm and guard something when the earth is shaking? We couldn't do it. One job. Keep a dead guy dead. Let hope stay dead in that tomb or at least keep that message covered up. And so for us, it was the worst Easter ever. But not for those women who came later that morning. The angel had terrified us, but he didn't do that to them. The angel had shaken the earth and sent us to the ground like dead men so that we were really the only ones who belonged in a tomb that morning. But that's not what he did to the women. He spoke to them. And from what I've heard, this is what he said. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead. And look, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. And the women hurried away from the tomb with fear and great joy. Now they thought it was going to be the worst Easter ever when they came that morning. It started bad. It probably started behind locked doors. And then their next activity was to go visit a grave. They were sad and afraid. And they should have been. Not just because a loved one had died, but because they had put their hope in this man. They had put their hope in this person who said he was the resurrection and the life, but then he had been crucified in a horrible way. He had died. And so they should have been afraid because the one they were counting on for this life and the next seemed to be dead. It was going to be the worst Easter ever as they came out to that grave with spices and tears. 
to try to cover up the destruction and the finality and the disgustingness of death. And if that's what they had done on Easter morning, it would have been the worst for them too. But that's not what happened. Instead, an angel appeared to them. The angel that had terrified us, the angel appeared to them and gave them the greatest news they had ever heard. And I have never seen such sadness turn into such joy. He isn't here. He is risen, just as he said. Come, look, if you don't believe. See, the tomb is empty. You should have seen him run to go tell the disciples with a little bit of fear, but more than that, with great joy. Best Easter ever for them. And so, yeah, for us, it was pretty bad. For anybody who wishes that, that Jesus had stayed in the tomb, it's a bad Easter. We tried to keep him there. We tried to seal the tomb. We guarded it. Strong soldiers, right? It didn't work. And we tried something else after that. The leaders paid us money to keep this quiet. As if any amount of money could keep a truth this earth-shattering quiet. For us who hoped that Jesus would have stayed dead, it was a terrible Easter. And my recommendation for you on this Easter is if you want this to be a bad Easter, try to keep him in the grave. Try to do what we did. Try to seal him, or if not him, seal the message about his resurrection in the tomb. Do your best by explaining it away, by ignoring it, by being distracted from it with everything else that's going on in your life. Go ahead and try to keep the message of the resurrection in that tomb by lamenting all the things that you wish you could do this Easter that you normally do that you can't. Try. And it's going to be a bad Easter. Because no matter what you do, no matter what we tried to do, this truth can't stay buried. He's alive. He's alive. He is risen. If you're trying to keep that truth under wraps, it's going to be a bad Easter. Because whether through an earth shaking angel or through trembling women, this message is being proclaimed. And we can't stop it. If you want to hear that message, if you're hoping in that message, if this man was your Lord, then I got good news for you. You win. We couldn't keep him in. This is going to be a good Easter for you because he's alive and he has told you He is not here. He is risen. Do not be afraid. There's a little bit of a crazy thing about this man's followers is that they like to be afraid. Or at least it seems like it. Because even after these women heard this incredible message, they went away, yes, with great joy, but they also went away with fear. And this seems to happen a lot with this guy's followers. We soldiers have been watching his ministry a little bit, his followers through these three years, and he has never given them a reason to be afraid. He speaks to them with such loving words, with such incredible promises. He's done all sorts of miracles, and yet his disciples always seem scared. And never was that more true than when we killed him. Because they weren't there. Most of them, they ran away. They were afraid. And even on this Easter morning, they were scared. And maybe part of it was because they knew that. 
because they knew that they weren't great followers. They knew they weren't great disciples. They were often afraid. They often doubted his words. They abandoned their master when he died. They went to the tomb expecting him to be there. And maybe you're like his followers too. Like all of his followers that I've seen throughout time. Followers who like to be afraid. Who doubt. Even when you shouldn't. Who are worried. And let these worries distract you from his miracles, his promises. Maybe sometimes you're afraid because you're like the disciples when that man was crucified. You haven't always been the greatest followers. You've abandoned him. You've left him for dead with the way you've lived, with the way you've run away from him. But if you're like that, I got more bad news for you this Easter. If you want to stay afraid, this is going to be the worst Easter ever. Because if I know that about his disciples, I also know that about the Savior, is that this Savior doesn't like his disciples to be afraid. And because he doesn't, he goes to them again and again, and he gives them reasons to never be afraid again. He sends messengers to them to say, do not be afraid. And that's exactly what happened this Easter. These women ran away with fear, mixed with their joy. And so what did their Lord do? He came to them again. They hurried away from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. But suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. They approached, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go, tell my brothers that they should go to Galilee, and there they will see me. It seemed like they wanted to be afraid that Easter, but their Lord wouldn't have it. He showed up, and he didn't scold them for their fear, for not listening to the angel, no. He said, Hi. As if nothing had ever gone wrong. Greetings. He spoke to them and said, Do not be afraid. He allowed them, those fearful disciples, to worship him. And then he said, Go tell my brothers about this. He called them brothers. Those disciples who weren't even there when we killed him who had abandoned him and left him for dead, they hadn't even come to bury him. And he calls them brothers. As if they've never done anything wrong, as if everything was forgiven, as if they were all one big happy family and everything that he had, his life, his resurrection, his glory, he was going to share with them. He took away their fear. And if you're his followers, that's what he does for you too. I'm sure of it. I'm sure this Savior has never gotten tired of coming to you and saying again and again, do not be afraid. Ask yourself, how many times has the Lord that we couldn't keep in the tomb that morning, how many times has the Lord presented himself to you as your Lord? How many times has he greeted you with the peace of God which goes beyond all human understanding as if nothing has ever gone wrong? How many times has he called you my brothers and sisters? treated you like family, as if everything you've ever done wrong, as if every failing you've ever done following him is forgiven. How many times has he made an even greater promise to you than he made to those disciples, 
not telling you, go to Galilee and there you will see me. Instead saying, you will see me when I come back to take you to be with me where I am in perfect resurrected glory forever. I don't know how many times he's told you that, but I know one thing. He's not going to get tired of it, of telling you this again and again, of saying, do not be afraid, of giving you more confidence than we had fear that morning, that death is gone and that he lives, and because he lives, you too will live. And so, yeah, if you're like me, if you're like the soldiers that morning, it probably is the worst Easter ever today. If you wanted this guy to stay dead, and if you want to stay afraid, I'm sorry. It's not happening. But if you're hoping in a living Lord, if you believe in an empty tomb, if you want your fear taken away, well then, today is going to be the best Easter ever. Amen. Please stand. Job chapter 19, verse 24 says, As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives. Amen. We'll continue now by confessing our faith in our living Lord with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day. Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross. Alleluia. Suffer to redeem our loss. Alleluia. Please our praise, then let us sing. Alleluia. Unto Christ our heavenly King.
We pray. Almighty and merciful God, on this glorious day we rejoice in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Increase our faith that the grace of the empty tomb may fill our lives and make us glad each day. When we are weak, be our strength. When we are sad, be our song. And when we sin, be our salvation. Remove the disgrace of death from all who mourn. In moments of grief, call believers through the voice of our Good Shepherd and embolden us to follow his promises. In their hopelessness of despair, turn the faithless to trust in the only way, truth, and life. Wipe away tears born of death and give new birth to a living hope in the hearts of the lost and troubled. Use our witness as compassion and comfort for others in need of mercy. King of kings and Lord of lords, destroy all dominion, authority, and power that stands against you, whether seen or unseen. Whatever evil exerts itself against your saving will, false teaching or lukewarm faith, Satan's lies or worldly pleasures, empty worship or futile religion, rule it for the sake of the gospel's free course. Triumph over our enemies and empower the church to fight the good fight to the end. Never leave us or forsake us. Walk among our churches, O living one, as the faithful witness and firstborn from the dead. As your angel sent women with news of the risen Christ, call women in our church to announce he is risen. As you sent your disciples with the power of the Spirit, Use all of us to share with a broken and dying world the news of your eternal victory. Empower us to speak your truth and love to our circles of friends, relatives, and neighbors. Bless our efforts to help others understand and believe the victory of Easter. Heavenly Father, keep the baptized united with your Son in his resurrection. Put to death the fleshly urges of those caught in addictions. Clothe in your righteousness anyone ashamed of good intentions which have fallen short. And assure those searching for purpose that their eternal identity as your dear children is sealed. Thank you for the power of baptism working in our lives and for the certainty of its promises through the resurrection. Enrich us with everything we need for life and godliness. O Lord of life, you have done mighty things for us. We pray through him who is the beginning and the end, Jesus Christ, our Lord. His name is above every name, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we join to pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you give us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also the joys of life in your service, and bring us at last to the full joy of life eternal. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
God bless your day, your week, and your life with the joy of the resurrection.